Hi, I'm Anna of Pumora and today I want to show you how the stitch videos are made. As you can see, there's not a lot of space in my workspace, but luckily you don't need much space for doing embroidery. I'm using a tripod for my good camera and a mobile arm for my phone. Last year I started out with only my phone shooting from the top, but with your support I could invest in a better digital camera. I had a good camera, but this is more suited for photographs and overheats quickly when used for filming. Not very practical. Now I'm able to shoot both from the top and from an angle. That is very helpful because some stitches are worked with my hands in the way of the top camera. In that case the camera angle on the side becomes super important. I'm using this embroidery stand to avoid shaking in the picture. It is very helpful for such close-up filming, but I like to use it for my regular stitching too. Here is the stitch sampler for this year. You can see that there is still a lot to do. The stitches of each month are not exactly in one spot together, so I try to film one or two neighbor stitches every time while the fabric is in the hoop. This helps me work a bit in advance, so that I have the stitches finished before Christmas season hits. To keep track of my progress, I used this little stitched booklet. It was one of the stitching projects here on Patreon. In it, I note my progress on filming and editing the videos, if the illustration is finished or not and what thread colors I used. Keeping notes is very important for big projects like this. Then I search the stitch I want to film and put the sampler into the hoop. I don't like excess fabric hanging down, so I pin it away with sewing pins. I'm shooting the front and back of each new stitch. Thanks to you I could invest in a macro lens this year. With a regular lens I would not be able to shoot so close to the stitches. With this darling I can even see the fibers inside the threads. It's amazing. When everything is finished all the materials get packed away in this little project bag. <music> And this is how my desk looks like after filming. I use my own stitch lexicon for reference most of the time, but sometimes I'm not sure enough with a stitch name or a new stitch that isn't in the lexicon yet. Then I double check with my stitch books. In this case, there was a bit of a confusion with the purse stitch. It was named differently in the Mary Thomas book and the stitch that was the stitch I was doing was named Knotted Pearl Stitch. In the end I went with the version already in the stitch lexicon and also depicted in the Ganderton books to avoid confusion. And this is how the stitch videos are done. After that it's a lot of editing, uploading and scheduling to the different channels. It is crazy how much time it costs to do the after work. Sometimes I wish I could hire a team to do all that at some point, but right now it is all me and that's okay too. I hope you enjoyed this little geek behind the scenes. I'm planning on doing more casual videos like this for you. I'm thinking of a video about what I have in my stitching basket, what embroidery tools I can recommend and a book recommendation video. What do you think? I create a poll on Patreon so that you can vote which you'd prefer to watch first. That's it for today. I wish you a great day and a lot of fun with your stitching projects.